This is Kim, Kim Claver. I had started a session, a series last week on the three rookie mistakes. And rookie normally is defined as somebody who's like brand new, you know. However, a lot of people are new and stay new for a year or two or three. That is, they don't change anything they do. So for all intents and purposes, they really are still new. So what you want to do is have the attitude of know who you can help, which I'm going to show you here, and then talk to people who have that problem. So you can see what it is they need help with and why they haven't achieved whatever it is they want so far. See, in our industry, and in internet marketing and network marketing, big focus for everyone is to sell their thing. And this, if you have that as your focus and you let other people know this is your focus, here I am with my great thing, uh, you will have a very unhappy career in sales and marketing. You just will. <laughs> so you got to be smarter than that. I want to show you how to do that here. All right. So last week, what I showed you was, now the first mistake is trying to sell your thing to people who really don't want it. And you may have been told everybody wants this, everybody needs this. Uh, and if you keep believing that and keep acting on it, you will be, again, you'll just quit. You'll be one of the dead network marketers. You'll be a statistic who never did make it and thinking the wrong thing. You know, you have to change what you think and how you do stuff when the results stare you in the face and tell you, you know, all these people are saying, no, what, what, what could it be? And after you check out what you say, you need to find out about the people that you spoke to and why they said no. Because it may be very good reason. Like, not everybody buys a tube of toothpaste. Why not? Well, some people want spray. Well, if you didn't know that, you'd be crying your eyes out because you talked to 50 people and nobody bought your toothpaste. And you didn't know that none of the, this is an area where they all want spray. How do you know? If you don't ask, you just think it's you <laughs> and that's, or your product. And that's wrong. See, you need to know about both pieces, you and the people that you're talking to, whether they're your client prospects or not. See, but you need both of those. So this is the big mistake, trying to sell your thing to people who really don't want it. And you know what happens then. Okay, here's the second mistake. After you've been in the business for a while, both network marketers and internet marketers, here's what happens. You get all attracted to these, to these shiny tools that promise automation and you really never have to talk to anyone. And I'm here to tell you that if you don't have a message and an offer that works for your market, Automation is not going to fix it. Automation cannot fix what is broken in the first place. You automate something and scale something that works. So first you got to get it to work, you see? So that's step one. So let's say that you were attracted to bots. Oh, Facebook bots, right? Like, what do you call it? Uh, ManyChat? I have that. <laughs> in fact, I showed you a few weeks ago how you could set one up by taking you through mine so you can see what it is. It might be funnels. You might have bought Russell Brunson's a click funnels or some other funnel system or some funnel page maker. You might have bought as, as some kind of an email system like a Weber or I don't know, Infusionsoft. So you have these tools and they all say automate, 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 automate. And so you go, Oh yeah, let's hit a button, push button and automate this thing and get this horrible issue of getting all these nose in my face, get it over with. Right. And so you get a, you get a bot and you see the template. Well, if you get a good bot, they're going to tell you, okay, so basically what's the introductory question you're going to ask the people on your messaging? Because remember, you have to, if you're going to PM somebody, a bot is an automated message sequence that allows the other person to answer the question. And then you say something else and then they answer the question. And what happens is this is a sequence and the bot it's, it's a bot because it allows you to kind of plan or program with your own brain the introductory question, then the option that the readers have, that, and that's programmed in there. So you might have an introductory question like, if I could show you that this would be one of mine, but you have to think this up, you see. The bots don't come with this. They come with a template. And then you have to fill in the blanks. And if you don't know how to fill in the blanks, you're going to sit there and go, well, I just spent, I don't know, 300 bucks to have somebody help me set up mini chat. You can do it yourself if you're techie, but you can have somebody set it up. But then they'll say, okay, so what's the content? What are the words you want to put in here? What's the first question going to be? And you're going to go, well, crap, I don't know. 
uh, you want to buy my thing? Probably not. I have this great, marvelous thing. Okay, let's try. I have something that'll make your DNA really zoom. Well, Dr. Dingling said this product is really good, so you, you want to have it? And there you sit thinking, what should I do? How am I going to do this? What am I going to say? And so your bot goes to the back of the, your drawer, you know, so to speak, because you don't have any words to put there. You need to have the whole thing thought out. And to do that, you need to know who you can help and what their problems are. Otherwise, you don't have an introductory question. Let me give you an example of one of mine that I have. I might program in an introductory question and it might say something like, uh, this is based on knowing the problems that people have that I can help. That's the only way you know this. Otherwise, you can never know. It does not come out of your head sitting on the couch, no. It comes from them telling you, well, here's the issue. This is why I'm not doing it. So I might have, would you like to see a way, build your business without ever going to friends or family? Okay, so that would be one of my questions in my bot. Would you like to, to see a way to grow your business without ever going to friends or family? That would be the question, why? Because I've heard hundreds of people, thousands say, I want to build my business without going friends or family, right? They've told me this. So you wouldn't know this about your clientele, your market, if you've never talked to them. If you sit home on the couch wondering what you should say, <laughs> this is not how it works. It's easy to get it from them. You have to go talk to them and find them. And if you don't know where they are now to talk to them and do some research, how in the world are you ever going to sell them? You've got to know who you can help. And you've got to care about those people and that problem. You want to be the number one best solver of that problem in the world. And it can be very narrow and you can make a lot of money being really narrow. You don't need everyone. You don't want everyone. That's the last thing you want. Look around. <laughs> okay, so that's the first question. So do you want to have this, this way of doing this without friends or family? Then I have to come up with the answers. What would somebody say? You have to think of this, see? That's the content part. One person might say, nah, I already know how. So I'm just anticipating that and I put that in. Nah, I already know how. That's one option, all right? And the second one might be, yeah, I wanna know how. How do you do that? And so I set it up and they give me, they click one of those. And depending on which one they click, like nah, I already know, I have to program another response in there where they would go to a PDF or a video or whatever and show them the next part. Either way, I have to plan on that, see? So you have to have your thing planned out. And so if they say, well, yeah, I wanna know what that is. Say, okay, to, here's a video that shows you in six minutes one way to do that. You wanna see it? Gotta do it again. Yes, nah. So if they say yes, then you have that link ready to your video. And for God's sakes, do not ever use your company page. Everybody knows it's, you know, that, that this is not personal. See, if you want to look like you care about your market and you care about the people that you help and the problem that you help solve, you wouldn't use something that's out of the box, like your company replicated website. They're usually the worst looking things in the world. And why would somebody sign up with you if you, if you pretend to care about that problem and know something about it? Why would you, why would you do that? It's like looking online for a doctor and you get some kind of a form that says which, which one of these guys you want. They're all the same, <laughs> you know, you don't even know what the difference is. You wouldn't go there. So you see, eventually you give them a link to buy or a video to watch more or a PDF. That's, that's the process. But if you don't know who you can help, what are you gonna do with it? How many of you have bots and you haven't done a thing because you don't know this part, right? We're gonna fix that here, so don't worry. So what do you put there? What's the message? What are the words, right? What's the message and offer you have for them? So the next, another one, you get a funnel. Let's say you get a funnel like ClickFunnels. And if you go to ClickFunnels, when you sign up for whether it's a $97 account or $297, where you have a lot of stuff, you'll get a lot of templates. The minute you open that thing up, you get tons of templates with the colors and the buttons and the layouts, you know, with the video on this side or a PDF on this side and all these different templates with buttons and places for the words. And you know what the words all say? Lorem, ipsum, blah, 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 blah. Why? 
because they don't know your market. They don't know who you can help, you see. So they don't put anything in there that you can really use. You can copy. I think they have, nowadays they have, I think Russell and they put in some stuff where you could say, I have this fabulous product. Don't use any language like that. Because if you do, you'll, you'll see why <laughs> they don't use it themselves. It's just to give you some words. But when you get the funnel, you see all the templates for the landing page and then you think, oh, okay, I have it. So now I have to fill it in. So how do I fill it in? Well, I don't know. So I, there are dozens of people right here in this next group who have click funnels and have never used it because you spent a week figuring out the templates and the colors and this is how it's going to be. And then it's time to fill in the blanks. You're going to now talk to people, right? What are you going to say? And you don't know. Well, I have this great product. You know, my company has no history, no, 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 no debt, <laughs> no, this, none of that. And you don't know what to say. So you don't say anything. And you don't and that's it and remember at the top at the bottom of a landing page uh, I'm going to show you one of mine here in a minute you get there's a place for them to enter their email the purpose of a landing page is to attract your market to you your market not everyone just the people you can help find a way to do that and that's not easy I've been working on landing pages for years everybody in any business works on them for years. It's never over. You will always try to find a way to do it better if you're any good. Because the shorter path to your ideal prospects, the more you can help sooner without a lot of stress. See, But there's a box at the end to enter their email so that you can send them emails. And you have to get the person to want enough information in addition to what you're promising on the landing page so that they enter their email and they get onto your email list. That's the idea here, right? It's not to sell them the thing. But the question is, what do you put there? What are the words? Nobody knows. <laughs> if you don't know your niche, you don't know what to do. So the, it's another tool that looks really good, but there's nothing to automate because you don't know who you help exactly. You know what I mean? Okay, so those are the questions. You get an email subject. Let's say you get an email system, because of course, after the landing page, you gotta have to get an email system. And if you're using, um, Russell's program, I think they have an email system, but a lot of you have other, like Aweber and I don't know, like Get Response, places like that, Infusionsoft, Active Campaign, all these. But the email, the system that you get and pay a couple hundred bucks for, plus a monthly, they'll show you the template and they'll say, okay, what do you want to put for the subject? I don't know. My new, my great thing, right? Who's going to open that? Not really. And what are you going to put for the body, right? What are you going to put for the PS underneath the signature? None of that is there. You have to fill that in. And if you don't know who you help, you're not going to know how to fill it in. And most of you, many of you have email systems that you haven't sent out any emails because you haven't got a clue what to put in the subject or the body or the PS. That's why the tools without knowing who you help are basically useless because you don't know what to put there. Okay. I think I've made my point here. Don't buy any tools thinking that they will do the messaging and the offer for you if you don't already know it. You automate stuff that works. When you talk to three people or five people and you see exactly what they need and you're able to offer it to them, you automate that. But when you haven't, everybody you talk to says no because you're talking to all the wrong people and using all the wrong words, what, why do you want to automate that? Why do you want to run Facebook ads on stuff that doesn't even work when you're talking to normal people? <laughs> Free, right? All right, so shiny tools. They will work to scale or automate your messages if the messages to begin with speak to your niche, okay? Okay, so your niche, that is defined as people that you can actually help and who will pay for what you have. You know, you're, nobody's suggesting that you should be running a house of charity, okay? No one said that. Some of you want to do that because you feel hung up about taking people's money, but that's an issue that you have to overcome. Because if you cannot take people's money, then you need to figure out a way to get enough of it so you can be a church later. But you can't have a church without people giving you money. Even the church, think about the church. What do they do every Sunday? Hand over the money. At some point during some exciting part of the sermon or just before, or just after, that plate goes around if they still do that. I mean, when I was a kid and we went to church, the plate was, I mean, it's like, it's going by all the time <laughs> and it's like amazing but that's how the church gets money 
to donate to someone else. They ask for it. And how do they get it? Well, the people that are sitting in there, or today, I don't know what they do. I guess you're going to have to PayPal the church because nobody's going anywhere, these big groups. They ask you, hey, do you support what we do? Do we help you feel better on a bad day? Do we help you, you know, trust in whatever the version of the religion is? If so, support us. Send money. Notice they're calling their niche. People who are helped by, who need the services of this particular church. And that's how the churches do it. So you have to be the same. If you want to give stuff away, you have to first figure out how to get money from those that you can help. Then after that, you can give it away. See, the church would have nothing to give to anyone if no one, if they didn't know how to get money from people. And they do. They're very good at it. Very, very good at it. I'll give you a lesson on how they do that sometime. You're not even aware that you're handing over their money. You so want what they have. This is how good we want to be with our client, our clientele. All right, so here's your statement you need to fill in. Hi there, this is Kim Claver, and I didn't want this to get too long. So if you'd like to see the next part of this, which show you the kinds of I help statements that I use, plus the without yada yada yada, so that I can complete the templates for all these automation tools like bots and emails and funnels, tune into the next section here and just opt in below or beside or wherever you see the little space for your name and email and I'll send that over to you. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for coming. This is Kim, Kim Claver. Bye.